Hey everyone and welcome back to Delitis Tech Solution. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to conduct a cyber security risk assessment. So this is a step by step. So whether you are an IT student, whether you are a cyber security beginner, a business owner, this guide will help you to identify threats, vulnerabilities and reduce cyber risk. So now let's jump in. So we're going to look at what a cyber security risk assessment is. You need to understand what cyber security assessment is. So it is the process of identifying, analyzing, and evaluating risks that can affect your systems, your data, and networks. So the ultimate goal for performing a cyber security assessment uh, risk assessment is to understand what assets you have, what threats they face, and how to reduce or manage these threats. Now let's look at the steps involved in uh, conducting a cyber security risk assessment. So the first thing you should do is to identify your assets. What are assets? I know assets can be uh, your company's data, can be servers and hardware, can be cloud services, can be user accounts and credentials. Basically, anything of value that can be impacted by a cyber attack. So let me show you how you can uh, identify your assets in, in, in a detailed way. So first of all, you need to list all your hardware. So all the company's hardware, you need to list them. It can be the servers, it can be the routers, it can be the workstations, and then you need to list softwares and applications. So it can be a CRM. It can be a CMS, it can be an OS or an operating system. After that, you list critical data. So what are some critical data? We have the customer information and we also have financial records and many more. And then you list or you identify any third party or any cloud services that is used by the company. And then you create a complete asset inventory sheets so with this you can use uh inventory tools like the glpi or spreadsheet so what is uh glpi so glpi is an open source it assessment management where it is probably used for um tracking systems and service deck systems okay so it's yeah it helps you to plan and manage uh, things easy, or you can also use the spreadsheets. Now let's look at the second step, where is to identify threats and vulnerabilities. So you need to identify these two, that is threats and vulnerabilities. But first, let's look at what a threat is. So a threat is any potential cause of an unwanted incident. So this can be a malware or ransomware or any human error. And also looking at a vulnerability, which is probably a weakness in your system. So could be something like um, updated service softwares or you know weak passwords so so let's say you know you are using an old version of wordpress let's say you are using wordpress for website development and that old version is a vulnerability you know hackers exploiting that is the threat so how do you identify such threats and vulnerabilities? So first of all, you need to identify the common threats. What are the common threats? As I said, malware, phishing, ransomware, and then you need to identify the system vulnerabilities. That is, you need to check whether 
some of your softwares are updated or any <coughs> there's any misconfigurations okay and then you need to perform a vulnerability scan so you can use tools such as the open vas or the nissos these tools can help you to perform these vulnerability scan and then you need to document each thread vulnerability pair now looking at the third one which is access likelihood and impacts so you need to assess likelihood of each thread which is happening and then the impact and and how it will impact so with this you can we, we scale um else to uh whether the impact is low medium high or we can also score it one to five or more detailed risk matrices so how do you we are going to uh, have a practical here so first of all you need to assign likelihood score as i said that is the low medium high or the one to five and then you assign impact score as well that is also the low medium high or one to five then you use a risk matrix to categorize uh risk so whether the risk is low is moderate is high or it's critical so you are done then you move to the step four which is to determine risk level so now you need to combine your likelihood and the impact ratings to calculate the risk level so for example uh we can say likelihood plus high impact equals critical risk so with this it helps you to prioritize which risks need first action or which needs uh, a critical action to be something yeah uh, i mean uh which needs to be attended first and then you have to implement mitigation measures so once you know your top risk it is time to respond so how do you respond uh right you have some options like to avoid the risk to reduce the risk so for example like applying patches using firewalls uh, multi-factor authentication or you can also transfer the risk that is what we call risk insurance or you can accept the risk if it has a low impact so you as i said you decide on your risk response or your mitigation response and then you that is that is avoiding reducing or you transfer or you accept the risks when you decide on what response you give out then you need to apply the mitigation steps so the mitigation steps can be the patches can be using firewalls can be using multi-factor authentications and also uh maybe backups and then you need to assign responsible team or personnel for each mitigation task when you're done you need to document and monitor so that is the final step you need to document your findings and create a risk register you don't just do it once you need to it's a risk assessment is is a process so it's something that is ongoing so you need to set reminders to review every three to six weeks or uh, sorry every three to six months or after a major it change so how do you actually do this document and monitor so first of all you need to create and update a risk registrar and then when you're done you need to schedule regular reviews of risks it can be quarterly or it can be binary and then you need to track 
the risk trends and emerging threats. When you're done, you need to update um, the mitigation measures as needed. So this is just a bonus tip, how to use risk assessment tools. Uh, so these are the tools you can use. Uh, we have the NIST. Uh, yeah, NIST cybersecurity framework. And we also have the ISO, the ISO, IEC 2705 guidelines. That is also a tool. You can also use the risk lens, which is also used for risk quantification. And then we have the open vars, the nissles, which is also used for vulnerability scanning. Right, so thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. For more cybersecurity tutorials, kindly follow us, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Don't mix any. So we have our, uh, on this note, I'm going to provide the PPTX in our website. The link is below in the description as well as our checklist for this course. The link is below in the description. Thank you very much.